I think we can now start. Yeah. So good evening, everyone. I'm Rupali from Mania Education. I welcome you all to the webinar today. Mania Education has a track record of 100% visa success for our Germany applicants. Experts with even 10 to 15 years of experience in placing students into top public universities in Germany who receive regular training with universities of Germany and stay updated on the university requirements. We have a two-layer admission criteria analysis session, a comparative analysis tracker, and an in-depth evaluation of credit conversions with a profile scorecard as per the course and university requirement standards. We also help students do an ROI analysis that forms the core of our process. Our experts advise students on funding opportunities, and we have a transparent CRM system that tracks progress as per defined TAT and milestones of your application. Our experts ensure placement and career orientation guidance to give each student a holistic benefit. The webinar today is divided into two sections primarily. The first will give you impactful insights. The first will give you impactful insights into entry requirements and application process for EU Business School and Gizma Business School. And the second part, Ms. Priya Kaur, the Germany admissions expert at Mania, will, with Shanice and Dylan, will resolve all your queries about Germany admissions. So I would like to introduce both of them as well. First of all, welcome to the session. And thank you for coming in, all of you. Um, for having us. Yeah. We have with us today um, Ms. Shanice, who is representing the EU Business School, and Mr. Dylan Coelho, representing the Gizma Business School. And we would just showcase a presentation about our organization and then start over. Yeah. Just give me a second. Right. So I hope my screen's visible. We, yes, yeah. We are we are from 20 years of study abroad counseling and we've been doing it for quite some time and we have a mentoring experience as well. Just a second. Yeah. We've guided about four lakh students towards their study abroad dream. We have a hundred percent visa success rate for Germany. 99% applicants to admit success ratio into TU9 universities. And how do we achieve this excellence? It's because we've got world's top admission experts who help you in this process. The admission counselors have guided over 1,000 of students to get through the TU9 universities. However, it's just not the skill and understanding of the top schools admissions that makes them unique, but it's their passion and experience that has built, that they've been building this so strong student profile personal interest in a student's profile, element of guidance in counseling approach, and a fine understanding of how admission officers read and evaluate applications is what makes our panel of experts help, that helps in sharing global future of an undergrad as well as a grad student. And our admission advisors are certified as global career counselors who have an understanding of higher education systems in Germany and other top study destinations. They understand and interpret the student's requirements, they link subject choices to possible courses and careers. They advise students on shortlisting and applying to relevant colleges. They fulfill students and parent expectations well. And are highly experienced test prep trainers as well. The Princeton Review Certified and Industry Benchmarking and Test Prep Training Globally. Most of the trainers have scored 99th percentile in the actual test. Hence, they undergo quality check every quarter and 40 hours of internal certification process every six months and they provide unlimited guidance through test reviews, doubt clearing, and additional lesson reviews, and deploy instructional strategy through specific topic-wise interventions to address students. They teach the strategies proven to have helped our students in joining the top 5% of the test takers, and ensure a sizable guaranteed score improvement from the time the student enrolls. This is what a CRM looks like, where you can track your progress of milestones real time and schedule interactions with admissions advisors. You can see the process in the timeline driven activity tracker to ensure that discipline completion of all suggested steps 
and profile development steps are take, take place. You can also see the adaptive recommendation engine, the interactive test analysis dashboard, the online class scheduler with recordings, the application timelines to ensure students' preparation is in line with early application deadlines. And also parents can connect with their dashboards, regular updates and tracking the overall progress of the student. Just a small gist of the whole thing, that 56% of Mania students score above 7.5 in the IELTS exam with a guaranteed score improvement. Also, we are technology aided, uh, we provide you technology aided teaching, mock tests, unique workbook for guided practice, and we've got certified trainers. Going ahead, um, just a second. Yeah. So today's session is about masters in Germany from top universities, a land of innovation and opportunities. I would like to start the session for the day. And I would request Shanice to begin with the session. Thank you so much, Rupali. Um, if I'm just going to uh, share my screen, uh, in which yeah. case your screen will disappear. Yeah. So uh, welcome, everyone. Um, it's a Friday evening. We're approaching the season of Christmas. So thank you so much for joining in. Uh, my name is Shanice Francis. I'm the Regional Recruitment Manager for EU Business School. And I just realized my camera is off. My bad. Okay, great. So uh, thank you once again for joining in. Um, I am a representative who is based out of Mumbai, but I'm also an alumni that graduated from the Geneva campus in Switzerland. Um, and I'm here to present on behalf of my colleague Gopi, who has been in touch with the Mania group uh, for many years now uh, and has had a, a very good association with Mania as well. So yes, as a, as a consultant, we can definitely vouch for them. Uh, moving forward, I'm not going to take up much of your time. We're going to get through the important stuff about EU Business School. There's a lot to cover, but I'll try and do it as quickly as possible. Um, just to let you know who you know uh, who we are, uh, we are an institution with Swiss values. Uh, I would say um, you know our head campus is really in Geneva, and we really adopt those Swiss values uh, from um, you know the Geneva campus. A very pragmatic approach of practical and theoretical work, uh, which I can definitely vouch for myself. Um, an international uh, mindset with over about uh, 150 nationalities across all the three campuses. Campuses. Um, this is a quick picture of our graduation ceremony that happens every year uh, at the President Wilson Hotel in Geneva. Um, so just to let you know where we're located, so we're uh, predominantly located out of Europe. Uh, we have campuses in Barcelona, Spain, Geneva and Switzerland, Munich in Germany and the digital campus. Uh, I will be focusing a little bit more on the Munich campus in Germany, but I just want to really uh, touch base quickly on the other campuses as well. So the Barcelona campus, as you can see from the picture, is very vibrant, very sunny city. Uh, it is definitely known as a sunny city in Spain. We've got two campus buildings. If you can see my cursor on the left hand side, we have our main building, which is um, uh, the, uh, the Diagonal campus, where we occupy the entire building. And we have the Grandio campus, wherein we occupy two floors. But it's the biggest campus, um, really good uh, uh, GDP. Uh, the best GDP in Spain is in Barcelona. We're located 10 minutes away from the FC Barcelona Stadium, the Camp Nou one to be specific. Um, and uh, yes, really good in terms of if students are, if any of y'all are looking for finance, uh, fashion luxury, business management, um, you know, tourism for sure. Uh, I think Barcelona is really the city to be in. And it's also been voted as, uh, the, the, you know, among the top four cities for innovation in Europe. The Geneva campus is personally where I studied. We're located uh, literally two minutes away from the center of attraction, which is the Jado, the highest fountain in the world. Um, it's one of our smallest campuses with about 400 to 500 students, uh, you know, spread across the bachelor's, master's and the MBA programs. Uh, but again, a very nice city, um, superb weather. It doesn't get too cold. Of course, at this time of the year, for some reason, it's gone really cold. It's gone to minus 10 currently. 
snowing in Geneva, which is very, very rare, uh, considering the global warming patterns and things like that. Uh, we're located uh, 10 minutes away from the headquarters of the UN, um, very closely located to a lot of financial institutions and, of course, a, a lot of other international organizations. Um, we're also very closely located to CERN. Uh, anyone who, who's interested in physics will know about CERN. Uh, but again, a very great campus if you want to make connections. It's one of our VIP campuses, as we call it, because it's a Swiss campus. Uh, the professors, the students are of a different, uh, you know, in, ingrained DNA uh, has itself. So we, we set apart the Geneva campus as our VIP campus, apart from it being our headquarter campus as well. Um, the Munich campus, um, Munich is basically a lovely city. It's got a great work-life balance. Uh, we are located right opposite the ground where the Oktoberfest happens every year. For those of you not aware, the Oktoberfest is one of the biggest beer drinking festivals in Europe. Uh, but Apart from that, of a few economical stats, I would say uh, Munich's got a very good unemployment rate. You've got an unemployment rate of 4.5%, uh, which has been really great. A lot of students are getting internships, part-time jobs, full-time job opportunities as well. Um, you've got a lot of headquarters that are surrounding the institution. You've got HP, Siemens, BMW is about 30 minutes away from our campus. We're very centrally located. So our campuses, uh, our accommodation rather, is off campus. Uh, but in terms of economy, spe economically speaking, uh, Munich is also known as the Silicon Valley of Germany uh, because of the kind of investments it's been receiving over the past few um, years. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're really looking at, uh, at Germany and you're looking at Munich, you should definitely look at uh, EU Business School has an option. As I mentioned, very pragmatic approach to studying a lot of practical work in terms of case studies, presentations, uh, you know, group assignments as well and in terms of theory we try and stay on the low end on that end we also have a digital campus it doesn't uh, attract a lot of students uh, uh, specifically from the indian region uh, but it does come into play when you're really talking about um, you know um, a hybrid program which i will speak a little bit about later on as i was mentioning we have about 150 different nationalities on campus so this is just a ratio of where these nationalities come from. So we've got 29% from Europe itself, from Asia, uh, which includes India, 16%, Russia, 20%, uh, America, 19%, 11 from Middle, 11 from Middle East and Africa, and 5% from other regions as well. Um, we've got a lot of rankings as well. Uh, currently, the ranking I would like to focus on, which is not here currently for some reason, is we've got a 43rd ranking according to the QS European um, MB rankings uh, for EU Business School. In Spain, we're ranked number two according to MD, MBA Forbes and we've got a four-star ranking by QS uh, for the upliftment of salary post-completion of the program and I think that really speaks volumes about uh, our institution. Um, I think this would be beneficial for both uh, uh, Gizma as an institution and for EU Business School to talk about the newly introduced APS certificate. I'm not going to take much time about it, uh, but basically what the German embassy, in simple words to put it, has really divided the visa process. The first part of it is the APS process. Uh, wherein um, you courier your documents to the APS office and they get verified uh, by the APS office and you get a certificate. So it's basically a verification process for all your documents. Post that, um, you submit uh, with the certificate number, you can apply for a visa appointment. Uh, the APS cost is 18,000 um, rupees, uh, which in euros is approximately 200 euros. And I'm going to talk about that as well, because we're really, uh, we're going to be reimbursing students um, uh, for the APS money spent uh, in, in euros uh, on, the, on the invoice that we issue. Um, in terms of programs and start dates, uh, we're getting to the real matters now. We have a few crediting partners. We have UCAM, which is our main accrediting partner in Spain. We have University of Derby, London Met University, uh, wherein we have dual degrees with both, both these institutions. And then we have Dublin Business School as well, wherein we have dual degrees with them. 
So in terms of bachelor programs, we have our EU business school bachelor programs on the far left, wherein we have bachelors in business administration, uh, international relations, leisure and tourism management. And then we have the niche courses, like sports management, digital business as well. The second program that you see over here is a dual degree program with the University of Derby. So you've got HR management, business technology, enterprise, finance, marketing, international business as well. And then you've got a few techno management courses with uh, Dublin Business School, wherein you've got business law, cloud computing, information systems as well. Um, in terms of the master's and the MBA programs, it's a one-year program with three different semesters. We've got three intakes in a year. We've got October, January, and March. So any student looking at applying now, the two possible intakes are the March 2023 and the October 2023 intake. Uh, the master's program is a very specialization focused program. The MBA, on the other hand, has a combination of co-management courses as well as specialization courses. Um, the master's program is a 60 credit program versus the MBA, which is a 90 credit program. Uh, there are questions that come to me from students saying, ma'am, what is the difference between these credits? How does it affect our job search? Very simply put, if you are looking at completing a master's and MBA program and then going on to work in Germany or in Munich specifically, then you can choose any one of the programs. But if your future plan is to work, is to complete this program, work for a bit, and then uh, sort of, you know, do your PhD, then you definitely have to go in for the MBA program. So the master's and the MBA program from a job market perspective is the same. Um, the masters, we have different specializations. We have tourism and hospitality management, innovation and entrepreneurship, fashion, luxury, business, digital marketing, business analytics, and data science. Um, the MBA, on the other hand, has um, international marketing, again, leisure and tourism management, digital business. And we have niche courses like design management, blockchain management as well. Um, the MBA uh, with Dublin Business School has three different pathways, which really takes us into the techno management uh, courses, which will include cloud computing, project management, and information systems. Uh, remember that the MBA with the techno management pathways has only two intakes, which is October and January. The executive BBA program is not for everyone, but I would still like to introduce it to you all because there are, you know, we're, we're actually talking to an audience of 50 people, and I'm sure there are some with this kind of profile. Um, there are students who basically uh, complete their uh, uh, you know, the 12th grade and then move on to work post their 12th grade and have not completed their bachelor's. So if you have five years of work experience and are, 20, and are above 25 years of age, then you can go into the one-year executive bachelor's in business administration program combined with a one-year master's or MBA program. That's also possible. So I just want to make you aware of that program. Um, in terms of admission requirements, we have the bachelor's program. Um, we don't really have the um, we don't have the admission requirements here, but what I can tell you is it's very similar to the master's and MBA. So we don't require the bachelor degree or mark sheets. We require your high school mark sheets, which is important. Proof of English level will be the IELTS, which will be 6.0 or the TOEFL, which is the, wherein we accept a score of 85. Um, what I can tell you is that right now for Germany, and I think Dylan can confirm this fact later on, uh, but the IELTS or TOEFL has become a mandatory requirement as for uh, the visa requirements. Uh, hence, at uh, application process as well, we are making it compulsory um, to have the IELTS or the TOEFL scores. So if any of you have not yet taken the IELTS, or TOEFL, and if you have registered for it, we can proceed with your admissions based on the IELTS or TOEFL registration as well. Uh, a copy of the CV, two letters of recommendation, and an essay. Herein, we have five different topics, and you can write an essay on one of the five topics as well. A solvency form, passport copy, um, and uh, you know, two letters of recommendation, as I mentioned. So yeah, that's our admission requirements, very straightforward, um, nothing really to break your head about, uh, but IELTS is, of course, a mandatory requirement. Um, moving on, as I mentioned, we, we spoke about the study modalities earlier and we spoke about a digital campus. So what we are doing is that for students who are, there have been delays with the German embassy in terms of, um, you know, um, in, in terms of the visa and as a result of which we've created a hybrid environment where the classes are going to be live streamed from Munich and you can follow your classes online until you get your visa and then you can come onto campus and continue from where you left off. So it's a very 
seamless process. A lot of students have done it and have been very successful. And honestly speaking, it helps students in a big way. Uh, we've seen a huge difference in terms of students studying online and then coming on campus because it's an international education system. You get to grasp the international education system without any, I would say, outside factors sort of determining it. You know, students concentrate on part time jobs, on their homes, living in a new city, the weather, it all gets too much for a student to handle. So when they start online, they're only focused on their studies, where you have your parents and people at home to help you in terms of food and laundry and things like that. Um, and then coming onto campus really gives them that boost and that confidence uh, with their studies on campus. So that's something that I just want to put out there. Uh, in terms of the studying modalities, but most students who get their visa on time start on campus. We also offer a few scholarships. Um, we have the merit-based scholarship, which is 30, which can be anywhere between 10% to 30% on the whole one-year tuition fees. Uh, but since it's the merit-based scholarship, we obviously are going to be looking at your grades. Uh, so for any student applying for the bachelor's, we're looking at a minimum percentage of 80. Uh, anyone applying for the master's or the MBA, we're looking at above 70%. Uh, the IELTS scores will be slightly higher than the, um, than the current um, requirement. So instead of six, we're asking for 6.5 overall for a merit-based scholarship. We also have a scholarship essay, and then we have an interview with the scholarship committee as well. The ambassador scholarship is a flat 2,000 euro off on the entire year tuition fee. Again, the requirements will remain the same, but we also, um, you know, we also expect students to join us in promotional events and uh, speaking to oncoming students on onboarding students. We also expect students to do that if they are awarded the ambassador scholarship. Uh, as I mentioned, the APS certificate cost 18,000 uh, Indian rupees, but we will be deducting 200, not 225, but 200 euros from your first semester tuition fee once you get the APS certificate. We also have an early bird discount. Uh, currently for the Jan and the March intakes, the early bird discounts are closed. But if you're looking at the October intake, then we have a 7% discount on the entire year tuition fee. A little bit about the career services. Um, anyone that has looked into Europe uh, has a place, has a destination to study, will get to know, uh, or has talked to a university rep, will get to know that it is not a hundred percent placement strategy by the institution. It is uh, a combination of students and the institution really gearing up together to prepare for uh, a student's career. Um, so it's it's a bit of give and take sort of a, of a relationship um, where students really listen to the career service uh, department's advice. Um, although, um, you know, we're an English speaking institution, we definitely encourage students to learn German as a language. Uh, we provide A1 and A2 language classes of German on campus and we encourage students to go on to a B1 and B2 level and we can help you organize those classes as well. Um, I'll just give you a, a simple example. If you're going to go into the market uh, with only English as your primary language, then you're looking at probably about, what, 25% of the job market. Uh, but if you go in as a German and an English speaker, you're looking at 100% of the job market. So basically, in, in simple words, if you're looking for a job purely with English as your, as your language, you're going to probably take about nine months to get a full-time job. Internships, part-time jobs, available to everyone. But if you're talking about a full-time job, it's going to take about nine months. If you're looking at uh, you know, um, a, a combination of you speaking German and English as a student, then you're looking at probably just about three to six months to get a full-time job. That's really the comparison I'm going to draw out here. Another thing is your CV and cover letter. You know, um, you're going to be like, but what you know the career service will just help me with that it's it's not a really big factor it is a big factor in europe your cv and your cover letter changes according to every job you apply for every position that you apply for let's take for example you are applying to one of our partner companies like alliance we have a partnership with alliance and you're applying to their firm you're applying for two different jobs your cv and your cover letter are going to be different for both those positions even though it's the same company your cv and your cover letter will be adjusted accordingly and these are things that you're going to need to learn from the career service department. When I went uh, to university, I had a, a, a CV. I was barely 18 years old and I had a CV of one and a half page. Um, you can be 60 years in Europe, but you will still have a one page CV double-sided. You cannot go over that. 
uh, we see CV so many so many times with like three and four pages completely out of the question. So there are a lot of adjustments that you're going to have to do from a career perspective, one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews, mock interviews that are done with the career service department. And that's very important um, for you to understand the role that they play uh, from a career perspective. I can also share with you the employability report of 2021, which I'll be happy to do. So you're going to have a, a, a more uh, you know, detailed insight into it. Also, follow our Instagram page. You'll you'll be looking at uh, the um, uh, we had a uh, I can't get the name. They had a they had a name for it. it was not called the Talent Day, but they had ah the Business Immersion Week. Thank you. Just uh, yeah, so we had the Business Immersion Week uh, that happened uh, in November, uh, mid November, I would say, uh, and it was one week where you had you know companies coming over on campus to talk to our students. You had panel discussions, uh, you had company visits as well. So it was very entertaining for our students and was very insightful and great job opportunities as well uh, that are, were present through these uh, different um, you know sources as well. Um, uh, highlights from EU Business School, really, uh, when it comes to EU Business School, we really look at networking. It's networking, networking, and networking. You're networking with people like you can see on your screen, co-founder of Starbucks, country director of Google for Luxembourg in Belgium, the CFO of um, Manchester City, uh, who is also an alumni of EU Business School, the chairman of Nestle. You're interacting with these people on, like I would say, a, a, bi a, a, a weekly basis or, a, you know, uh, probably about once or twice a month um, and it's important to network networking is the dna of eu business school we are completing 50 years in 2023 um, and the connections and the networks that we build over the last uh, 50 years is really important for us and is really important for us students to really get into the job market um, you know upon completion of their program we also have a lot of activities. Um, we have the Amazon Web Services. We're one of the only uh, business schools, private business schools, to offer the Amazon Web Services in the whole of Bavaria. Uh, we have a Young Entrepreneurs Program, Change the World uh, Model UN, uh, UN in uh, New York. That's where we participate every year. Student clubs as well. And we want to add on as many as we can, but it keeps changing with different uh, batches of students. Every time a batch of students come in, they create a new club and um, you know their peers sort of carry it on so it's really interesting um a lot of sports activities um especially at the munich and barcelona campus we have field trips charity events and of course the student board um we're going to just look over quickly the accommodation so you can get a rough idea of the living expenses and i'm also going to sort of um uh, you know tell you the uh, tuition fee cost for each uh, program and campus so barcelona you're looking at approximately about uh, 900 to 1200 euros for the month. Uh, Switzerland, you're looking at 1,400 to 2,500 Swiss francs per month uh, for living expenses. Munich, you're looking at approximately about, not 1,400, but approximately about 1,200 to 1,400 euros for the month. A lot of students who start their part-time work, which I don't recommend in the first semester, start your part-time job from your second semester. It's very beneficial. Um, especially for yourself emotionally and as well, uh, you know, as well for your studies as well. Um, so, yeah, a lot of students that start working later on during the second semester sort of earn, I would say, approximately about 400, uh, 300 to 400 euros a week um, in a good part time job. Um, also, we were going to talk about the tuition fee structure while I'm here. Uh, I'll put in the chat box later. <clears throat> But for the master's program, it is 15,500 euros for the year. Um, the MBA program will be 21,800 euros uh, for the year. The bachelor's program will be 13,500 euros for the year. These uh, figures are only for the Barcelona and the Munich campus. The Switzerland campus would be slightly more expensive. <clears throat> so you have 28,000 for the master's, uh, 36,000 for the MBA, and you have um, 28,000 for the bachelor program for the year. Um, so yeah, moving on, these are the company visits and collaborations we have with companies all across uh, Germany and, um, you know, uh, Spain as well as Switzerland. <clears throat> and yeah, we have a network of 28,000 alumni at the moment. That brings me to the end of my session. Um, I hope it was not too quick uh, and it was not too lengthy either. So thank you so much for your time. And I can see that there are a lot of questions coming in the chat box. 
<clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer these questions as we go along in the in the chat box. And also, uh, once Dylan finishes his presentation, we can, you know, uh, combine. I think we can answer those questions as well. Thank, so thank you, you so much. much. Yeah. OK, great. Go ahead, Dylan. Thank you so much, Janice. It was really, really, it was a really good insight. And I'm sure students have grasped a lot, especially about uh, the countries and uh, the, the benefits that they offered to students that join university that Germany. Yeah. Uh, if you want to speak actually... a little bit more about the APS, I think I was a little too brief. Uh, but if you want to uh, dig into that a little bit more, uh, I'm, I'm happy to contribute later on as well. Sure, sure, sure. So what we can do is let's start with the APS process itself then. And I can continue with my presentation after that. Okay, great. So, so to start like off with, me... I think the APS is a quite a simple process. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Shanice. Uh, so to start off with, the APS is a, is, is a very simple process wherein you uh, have to just log on to the website, create your uh, credentials on it. Uh, as soon as you submit your details, you have to upload your payment details. Okay, and once uh, once you register successfully, you just have to courier your documents to the APS team in Delhi. Uh, that's it. And then it's it's a it's a waiting period that you have to you have to just wait for them to verify your documents. Uh, it's advisable that you reach out to your school in a college because APS will normally send them an email for verifying your documents and credentials. So it's very advisable that you reach out to the college, uh, inform them about the process. Uh, APS has particular email IDs through which they reach out to colleges. Uh, they are easily available. So if you inform your college in advance, I think the process will happen faster for you. Uh, just just a point to add there, when we spoke to the APS director, <clears throat> uh, the specific department that the APS is going to contact is uh, the exam control board of your college. It's of your college and not your university. <clears throat> that is just one point I wanted to add over there. Yeah, yeah sorry. It, they call they contact the college, in fact, directly, yes. Exactly. So it's a very simple process. Uh, I think you don't need to stress about it. Uh, you should start the process as soon as possible. And uh, if you've not done your English language test, that's the IELTS or TOEFL, you can do that simultaneously because that's not mandatory during the APS process right now. Uh, so you can start the APS process. It takes about four weeks to anywhere between four weeks to three months or four months right now. Uh, but even though the APS has put up a post saying that they're going to take about four months, we've seen students getting APS certificates on a daily basis. So Correct. till now, I've seen that the average turnaround time is still about four to five weeks. Uh, and I'm sure with processes evolving, it will keep getting better in the future. Uh, yeah. So just on the uh, safer side, I think, yeah, they put that yeah, time Just out. to add on to what Dylan said, uh, you know, uh, there was a post that went around uh, yeah. through Instagram about the four month thing. But the APS website and the German embassy have actually taken down that post because it's yes. not taking that long anymore. Uh, I've got students who have got their APS cert certificate within five to six weeks. Um, so, yes, it is definitely a, a fast moving process. And as a result, what we've seen is once a student gets the APS process, it takes about 10 days to get the visa appointment and once students complete the visa appointment it doesn't take more than 15 days to get your visa in hand um so that's just something i want to add on there in terms of the timeline yeah it's actually a blessing in disguise for everybody because course, during the covid period uh visas visa appointments were actually they had actually vanished students everybody knew that there were no visa appointments available at all people are selling in black xyz all this but now with aps coming into picture all that's gone and uh Frankly speaking, I've also seen in the initial phase of initially in uh, the mid of November, I have also seen students getting appointments in two hours. Like they've applied to on the on the website, the VFS website. Uh, they've been waitlisted, and within two hours, they've got a confirmation for their visa appointment. That's like uh, a real blessing in disguise. So that being said, I think uh, the point here is that the process for Germany is becoming easier and easier, and it's getting even more streamlined. Uh, the turnaround times will surely decrease, but I'm sure it's becoming better and better day by day. Okay, anything else that you'd like to add, Shanis, in the APS? Um, not really, mm. but yeah, just uh, I would just uh, like to say that even though, uh, as you rightly mentioned, the IELTS is not required as part of the APS uh, procedure, uh, we normally recommend our mm. students to give the IELTS along with the APS because what yeah. will happen is since the APS process is anyways taking four to six weeks, uh, the visa process will be cut short if the IELTS has been verified through APS. If you keep the IELTS pending, um, 
if the IELTS is not verified through the APS, the German embassy will verify it. And as a result of which the visa procedure will be dragged along. Um, so obviously it is a it's it's a bit of a time game, to be honest. Uh, if if you agree with me, Dylan. Uh, but yes, it is not mandatory, but we really recommend our students to go up to put down uh, the IELTS as part of the APS uh, documentation. Yeah, hundred percent agree with you on this. Yeah, yes, and even we would we are uh, sorry to interrupt you. Even mm. we would uh, like to suggest students to apply mm. for APS with IELTS. Mm. It will help them because if they'll get the verification done of the documents done for IELTS also will help them for future because APS is uh, is valid invalid. But you once you get the certificate, it is valid for long. So mm -hmm. uh, it's better to apply with IELTS. Yes. Correct. Yeah. And also, um, if you want to mention that the bachelor students now require test AS, do you have some information on that, uh, Dylan? Uh, so for now, students who are applying now, right now, like until Jan, test AS is not made mandatory. Uh, but after Jan, if you're applying for uh, a visa appointment, they will also require you to complete test AS. So test AS uh, is a separate process. It, it's included into the APS, but it's a little bit separate. So what you need to do is you need to register for any student going for a bachelor's program in Germany, you'll have to register for the test AS. According to the program that you selected, your future study program, you'll have to select a module in that for the test AS. Accordingly, you select the test center in your nearest city or in the city that you are. And uh, you complete the test, you get the result, and after which you can apply for your visa appointment. So it's not too tough. You need to, you need to obviously be prepared for it. Uh, please don't take it lightly because it carries a fee of 18,000 rupees. If you uh, if you fail to pass it in the first attempt, you'll have to again pay 18,000 to re-register. So I think it's it's advisable to please be prepared. It will save your time and money both. Yeah. Also, another thing is I don't, there are very few, I mean, the only way you can actually fail an APS process is if your documents are fake or forged, yes. uh, which I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, but also one thing is I want to draw comparison for y'all, uh, has informed, I've not seen one till date, but I has informed by the APS office. There are two outcomes. Uh, one is an APS uh, certificate, which means that all the documents have been verified. And the second one is an APS report, uh, which means that one or two documents have been left unverified. So if for some reason the APS cannot get in touch with your college, uh, that document remains unverified. Uh, but be it a report or a certificate, uh, you as students can, can still go ahead and apply for the visa appointment. There is no real uh, uh, hindrance to the visa appointment if you get an APS report. I personally, as, an, uh, as a representative, haven't seen one till date, but I just wanted to inform you all about it, just in case it does happen. Yes, and I, and to add to that, I've actually not seen any rejections till now from APS. Thank you so much, Dylan, for your cooperation. Thank you so much, Dylan, for your cooperation on that. Please go ahead, break a leg. So, so just give me a second. I'll share my screen. Uh, please do let me know once my screen is visible. It's visible. Thank you so much. And am I audible clearly? Yes, very clear. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so good evening, everyone. My name is Dylan. I am a representative of Gizma Business School, which is based in Germany. And similar to Shanis, even I'm based out of Mumbai, but we keep traveling uh, to meet and greet everybody and uh, get things rolling. Uh, so going ahead to the presentation, Gizma Business School has campuses in Berlin, Potsdam, Hamburg, and Hanover, where our courses are conducted. Uh, I'm sure the first thing that will come to your head uh, mostly is what are the benefits of going to Germany, right? So there are multiple benefits of going to Germany because uh, like Shannes also rightly mentioned, it's one of the most stable, it has one of the most stable economies. Uh, the unemployment rate is extremely, extremely low. Minimum wages are quite high, quite decent. Uh, since you've got an opportunity to work for 20 hours a week, uh, you can make, uh, you can cover your living cost also, uh, come, like not the entire cost, but you can cover a major part of your living cost also. And 18 months post study work visa is really, really good. Most students will get a job in the first three months because there are a lot of employment opportunities. Like it's it's like one of the startup capitals in the world, Germany. So studying in Germany makes a lot of sense because uh, if you're career oriented and you want to make a good living, this is the best place to go if you ask me. Okay, a lot of startups, a lot of uh, focus on uh, the lot of focus on IT, data science, mechanical, automotive. The industries, every industry is growing on in Germany. It's not just one industry; it's every industry is growing over there. Okay, 
If you ask me why Gizma, some some highlights are because we've got the Amber accreditation, which actually speaks volumes on the delivery of our uh, programs and the quality of programs, uh, quality of teaching that we have at campuses, along with the quality of students. So AMBA, just to, just to give you a gist, AMBA is nothing but association of MBAs. Uh, it's a very high and prestigious accreditation that a college gets because there are actually less than 2% colleges across the globe that have got this accreditation. Uh, so the AMBA team is very strict on that. Uh, the second thing is we've got, uh, when I say high in, highly innovative content, it's nothing but uh, the teaching methods are a little different. It's more practical. We believe more in presentations, theses, industrial visits, and more importantly on how outspoken the student is. Because our main motto, along with academics, is also to groom your personality and uh, develop your skills. That's what will actually help you in the real world situation after you complete a course, right? Uh, uh, then we have, uh, you can see the point five and uh, 4 and 5, they, are bo they both go hand in glove. Because we've got a lot of strong industry experts. We tied up with a lot of companies. And we have these industry experts, these top personalities coming to our campuses to speak to students. Uh, so we have an event every fortnight. Uh, it's it's like a subject-wise event. So if we have a if we have a personality from say a marketing background, then we have marketing students attending that session. And when I say top personalities, it's normally CEOs, founders, VPs, directors uh, of these top companies coming to our campus. So we have got very strong tie-ups. Uh, obviously, like you also, uh, it's it's the main thing that students require actually to grow. Because once you speak to such personalities, your confidence increases. Uh, when you go to give an interview, you will not, and you've already met the CEO of that company, you will not worry about speaking to an HR of that company then. So it actually helps you develop your personality, build your confidence, and everything else. Uh, similarly, we also have got a, a hybrid mode of teaching. Uh, that's why we mentioned high flex teaching and learning. Uh, due to the COVID scenario, we understood that. Uh, there are instances where a, where a student will not be able to travel to college. It might be due to visa delays, it might be due to health uh, reasons, or it might be due to distance, the travel reasons, etc. So because of which we also have a hybrid mode of studies. Uh, a student can start online and travel to the campus once he gets his visa. Or even if you're in Germany and you cannot travel due to personal reasons or health reasons or medical grounds, uh, you can still continue online. Uh, the classes are not recorded. It's all live classes. We've got multiple cameras and a big screen put up right in front of the professor. So you will not feel that you're sitting alone at home because it's a very, very lively environment. Okay. And the most important thing, it's a real, uh, it's a live uh, conversation that, uh, it's a live lecture that's happening. So if you have any queries, you can just raise your hand and the professor is right in front of you. Okay. Going further, these are some accreditations that we've got, like the AMBA, BAC, FIBA. We also tied up with uh, Amazon Web Services to for certification programs and Alibaba Cloud also. Uh, these are actually really helpful because along with your academics, you can also do uh, what do you say certificate programs along with your course over here with us. Okay, uh, these are some campuses that we have in Germany, <clears throat> like I mentioned, one in Berlin, then in Potsdam, in Hamburg, and in Hanover. So these are the four campuses that we have in Germany. Uh, the fifth campus is in UK, London, but that's just a training center for our students who have passed out. Uh, most of the programs are either in Berlin or in Potsdam. Uh, most of the masters, bachelors, and the MBA program. Uh, the Hamburg and Hanover campuses are mainly for language programs. Okay, uh, the, our newest, uh, what do you say, the newest campus that we have is the Potsdam campus. Uh, the entire building is rented out by Gizma, and it's a very beautiful campus. So this is the Potsdam campus. Uh, it's got like the latest technology. It's got ample of space. It's got a recreational room and everything. It's a very, very lively environment. And if you see your top right uh, corner of the screen, that's where we actually have the distinguished speaker series. So we have a class size of about 25 to 27 students interacting with top personalities like MD, CEOs of these big companies. It's very, very, very helpful for students. Uh, okay, this is just about the campus. Uh, even if you see uh, traveling to Germany makes sense and studying over there because the cost of living also is not too high. It's, uh, if you see on the right hand side, the green part, it's like the tier one cities are quite expensive in comparison to Germany. Uh, 890 to 990 is uh, like on the higher side. But if you ask me, the average cost should be somewhere around seven to 800 euros per month. And that includes all your, uh, what do you say, all your expenses besides the tuition fee. So it's a very it's a very nominal amount, not too high, not too low. And since you also have the opportunity of working 20 hours a week as part-time, I think uh, half of the cost gets recovered over there. Okay, coming to the programs that we have, we have a lot of programs for bachelors and masters. 
and uh, we have a flagship program that's a global MBA. So for bachelors, we have programs in data science, AI, and digital business. This is a hybrid program. Uh, it has, why I say hybrid? Because it's a mix of three different, uh, what do you say, modules. It's got data science, it's got AI and digital business all put together. Then we have international business management, which is a very, very sought after program. Then we have the computer science, we have uh, software engineering, and we have a business management program wherein a student can specialize in five different fields. You can select any one of them. So this also is a hybrid program. So in the first two semesters, you learn the ethos and the ethics of business management after which you travel, you move to your specialization. The programs that you can opt for during specialization are uh, cybersecurity, project management, uh, then we have marketing, we have HR, we have finance. So we actually cover all the bases in this one program itself. For our masters, again, we have the MSc in data science, AI and digital business. We have the international business management, we have computer science, uh, and we have uh, leadership for digital transformation. Again over here, the Masters in Business Management, this again is a hybrid program wherein you can specialize in any one of those five uh, modules that I just told you. So this program is actually very, very nice because along with your specialization, you're also learning and getting a management degree also altogether. So it's very helpful. Coming back to the NT criteria, uh, like uh, Shanis also informed you, now uh, the Indian Embassy has, uh, not the Indian Embassy, the German Embassy in fact has made it compulsory for students from India to have IELTS or TOEFL, okay? So without that, uh, it becomes uh, it becomes impossible to for submit your visa file. So for IELTS, a bachelor requirement is 5.5. For a master's program, it's six, and the MBA is 6.5, okay? For a bachelor's program, uh, you need to just have your 12th, uh, you need to complete your 12th standard with a minimum of 50%, uh, and you can apply directly. You don't need a student colleague or a bridging program or a foundation program to be uh, to be eligible for a bachelor's program with us. Uh, since we're a state registered university, we can we accept students directly up to the 12th also. Okay. All bachelor programs are of three year duration. Uh, coming to the fee part of it, uh, the fee per year is about 10,500 euros. Uh, but we also have very lucrative scholarships. So the scholarship for a bachelor's ranges uh, up to 25%. So if you get a full scholarship, uh, which in most cases, I, I can say 95% cases, students get it. Uh, so then your fee will reduce massively. Like across three years, you'll get about uh, 7,800 plus euros of discount, which is a very high amount, about six and a half lakhs approximately in Indian rupees. Okay. Coming to the master's, uh, the IELTS requirement is 6.0. You need to have a bachelor certificate to apply for a master's. You need to be uh, a postgraduate student, okay, or graduate, sorry. Uh, there are no entrance tests, nothing uh, to be eligible. Okay, we have various programs and uh, any, any background student can apply for any of the programs. Uh, because see, we know that at certain points of our of our what do you say of our career, we would like to switch also sometimes. So, for example, if you are an art student and now want to get into data science, that's also practically possible with us. Uh, the only catch over here is that since you will not be able to cope up directly for the program, we would offer you a pre-masters, which is a six months program. So, the point here is that uh, even if you're looking for a career change or a switch in your uh, what do you say academics, you can do that with us. You can go, you can opt for cybersecurity, you can opt for any, any of the IT programs or any management programs also. Okay. IELTS, one more thing is mandatory. Okay. For the masters, we've got two years, uh, we've got two 10 years, we've got a one year per course and a two year course both. Okay. There is eligibility criteria for that. Uh, uh, I think, okay. So let me tell you about the eligibility. To be eligible for a one year program, you need to have at least four years of bachelor's degree. Uh, that's a B to be practical. If not, you'll have to have at least some work experience that's minimum of two years to be eligible for the program. If you're a fresher with a three-year degree, uh, then you will have to opt for the two-year program. Uh, the reasoning of a year is because uh, an engineering program is more in depth. The students actually have basic knowledge of, uh, not basic, they have extensive knowledge. So that's why they would be able to cope up for the one-year program. So see, there's no, in terms of studies or modules, there's no difference between the one-year and two-year program. The only thing is we're in, we're in a two-year program, your semester is of six months. In a one-year program, we crunch the same semester into three months. So the studies are that fast and students need to cope up to that. So that's the only reason we have the eligibility criteria for a one-year and two-year program. Okay, but students are uh, can apply for both in case if they have uh, a four-year degree and, uh, and experience. If they want to still go for a two-year program, most welcome. Okay, coming to the, uh, to the MBA, uh, we have a global MBA. Uh, which is very, very, very uh, highly valued because of the AMBA accreditation. The IELTS requirements is a little high over here because of the delivery, uh, what do you say, the delivery of uh, lectures. 
So we require an IELTS of 6.5. When I, I, I say high, but I think this is just a normal IELTS score. Uh, it's it's not too tough to get 6.5. I've seen more students getting 7 plus. So don't worry if you're not prepared for your IELTS. If you've not given your IELTS, don't worry. I'm sure it's it's not too tough. It's just one month of preparation and, and all your worry will go away. Don't worry about that. Okay. To be eligible for an MBA, since we have only the one year duration course, which is a fast track course, we require students to have a minimum of at least three years work experience. Okay. But the MBA, if you see, is a very, very nice program. We've seen students getting uh, tremendously good offers after completing the course. Okay, moving up. Okay, so these are some of the companies that we tied up with. I couldn't put all of I'm so sorry, but uh, these are some of the companies that are tied up that we tied up with. And when I say tied up, we actually don't provide placement services as per se, but uh, the top personalities from these companies visit our campus, interact with students, and uh, they already know about our, our what do you say, our uh, university. So when a student applies, it becomes easier for them to get through. So if you see, we've got Google, we've got uh, Accenture, we've got EY, we've got a lot of, lot of companies uh, that are there on our panel. Okay, uh, if you see the pie chart down, almost all students get a job in the first three months. It, and it's not because of Gizma, it's because of Germany, to be frank with you. There are a lot of opportunities in Germany. Lot, lot, lot of opportunities. Uh, if you see the bar graph, uh, I don't want to be, I don't want to be blabbering a lot, but actually as per the stats, uh, the students have got a better offer than the average salaries. So this also speaks volumes because uh, because of the quality of education, I guess, uh, that's given to them. And most importantly is because of the services that we offer students. Uh, so we, like I said at the start, we actually want, uh, along with academics, we also want you to develop your skills and build your personality. That's what actually matters when you go out into the real world situation, when you actually sit in front of an interviewer and you give an interview. So your confidence level actually it actually it actually maps matches your uh, the outcome of the interview right so that's where we work on actually okay this is just the hybrid mode that we have so similar to spotify we also have a very very easy system that you can use uh, to access online classes uh, we have a very very simple lms system there are no recorded sessions you cannot record it also because we are very strict in terms of quality we want you to attend classes and we want you and attendance is mandatory with us so at least 80% attendance is required. So that's how we know that, okay, the student is interested and the student will clear the module successfully. If you don't have 80% uh, attendance, uh, the professors will stop you from uh, giving exams also. Okay. So this is nothing, but this is just the technology used in the classes for, uh, what do you say, for the live lectures. So this is something that I actually emphasize on because this is a very powerful session. Uh, these are some of the top, you say, personalities across uh, Germany who come to our campus and they interact with students personally so if you have a classroom size say the like if you have like a classroom of only 25 students interacting with such personalities it's a very one-on-one -on -one based interaction that you have so they share their live experiences you learn a lot from that you build a good rapport with them it helps you in getting part-time and full-time jobs both so these sessions are conducted on a fortnightly basis on a campus uh for all all the subjects that we have like for um for a marketing program we'll have a marketing personality coming in we'll have an it guy come it personality also so it's a very very interactive session and see these these things uh like for example if you take the it you might be learning a lot about it but until you know the practical use of it and until you know what how technology is evolving like the future then you actually understand what's happening in the background so these sessions actually help the student tremendously okay this is something that i'd like to highlight so i cannot commit anything right now but uh, we are already in touch with tata groups to have some internship program for some of the for some of our courses not all like we know tcs is mostly into uh, it so most probably for our it programs in the near future we might have i cannot commit and i'm not committing but in, in the in the near future we might have uh, internship programs also running parallelly uh, so we still uh, yet to sign the mou with them the memorandum once that's out, then I think we'll have a clearer picture and I'll, have, I'll be able to commit to you also better. Okay, this is nothing. This is this just shows that, uh, see, we are not very, uh, what do you say? We're not a very close, it's not a very close environment. We have a lot of distinguished people on the board advising us of what is the real world situation according to which we tweak our academic um, uh, this thing also modules also. So based on what's happening, what the requirement is, based on that, all the studies are, are conducted. So it's not that if a student has studied MSc marketing a year back, you will not study the same thing again. The professors have tremendous experience. Most of them are doctors, like the PhDs. 
and uh, it keeps changing. So this, uh, the, the subjects keep changing, like, not the subjects, the modules in, in the subject keeps changing. So we make it more real world. We have more industry, uh, industrial visits. So you understand what is being taught. And when you have a first hand experience, it becomes easy to grasp and uh, remember also. Okay, these are some of the benefits uh, that, I'll, that I'll show you that uh, the student has when he joins us. So like uh, Shanis also mentioned, we have a career support team. The career support team is a very, very, is a very, really, very good team. Uh, I'm sure as soon as I, I don't want to differ with Shanis, but uh, like Shanis said, you should not start your uh, part time as soon as you join over there, as soon as you reach Germany. You should first uh, settle down, ease it out, uh, get your, because you're going to study, right? You should first focus on that. Once you're comfortable, once everything is in line, then you should start studying. But as soon as you reach Germany, you can reach out to the career center team. They will help you with uh, your requirements, like building your resume, uh, giving you access to the latest job opportunities available. Once you have, uh, once you have an offer, once you have an offer for an interview, they will also take mock interviews to prep you for the interview. So it's a very wholesome service that uh, they offer. And uh, like recently, I have a live example with us right now. Like recently, we had a graduation day. So we had about 80 students graduate, 85, sorry, 85 students graduating. Out of which uh, before graduation, 76 already had a full-time job offer in their hand. So the service of a career center team is, is really, really good. Students should uh, make use of this. It's a really good opportunity. Instead of going online, wasting time, they already have all the data with them. They know what's happening in the market. They already have uh, our employees, our, sorry, our students working in a, a lot of companies. So first-hand data is already there with us. We know what opportunities are there. Reach out to the team. Please make use of this. Okay. Then we also have a visa service team on campus. Like, uh, like from India, Mania is there to help you, handhold you. And they're really good in what they do. I can vouch for that. But when you come to Germany, then the time difference matters. Plus, uh, the terminology X, Y, Z here and there, a lot of things differ. And plus, for you to work part time, attend classes, and coordinate with Mania to get your visa needs done, it'll be a really tedious job, right? So that's why we have the visa service team on campus. You can reach out to them anytime from Monday to Friday, and they will help you out with everything. Be it your temporary PR when you reach, be it uh, your post study work visa, or if you are a married uh, student and you want to get your spouse and student uh, and uh, what do you say, child. They will also help you with the family reunion visa. So you just need to give them your uh, consent and they will do all the documentation for you. Then one more very important service is accommodation service. Uh, I, I'm, I know it's very important because I see a lot of students struggling at the last minute. So uh, till, till a couple of months back, we used to actually charge students for the service, but now we've uh, waived that off because we know this is one of the most important uh, services and students actually face a lot of, uh, what do you say, they face a lot of stress searching accommodations. So to be frank with you, accommodation is not very easy. So on that point, I would like to tell you, please, once you get your offer from any college, please reach out to their accommodation service team, start the process as soon as possible. I think uh, the gap, the timeline uh, for you to travel to Germany and reaching out to the accommodation team should be at least two months. So at least two months before you, you plan your travel or, you, or your travel ticket, you should reach out to this team and search for accommodations. Nothing will happen in the last minute. You will start panicking and everything will go for a toss. Most colleges have this service. Please make available of this. Okay. Semester ticket is nothing but a travel pass, uh, which is available at our campus also. And lastly, we also provide a free A1 uh, language course for all our students, irrespective of whichever course you join, like a bachelor's, master's or the MBA. We provide a, you a beginner level German course. That's the A1 certification. Why do we do this? Is uh, like if you see, it's not mandatory to know the language because see, all all our courses are in English, right? But it's very important that you know the language. If if you know the language, if you know German language at least the basics, you will have an upper hand uh, in searching for jobs also, and you become more com it will become easier for you to adjust to the environment over there. So that's the reason why we have the A1 level language for all our students for free. And we actually push them towards joining the classes before they start their intake. Because most students travel to Germany, some of them travel a month uh, early on all. So even if they're not doing anything and we know that they're in Germany, we approach them, we tell them, please start the language and you can work part-time as assignment or whatever you want to do. But at least start the language course. It's very important, uh, students, that you have that you learn the language. It's not mandatory, like I said, but it's very important. Okay? And uh, okay, this is nothing but just some feedback from our students. It's a little blur. I'm sorry for the screen. And I'm done with the presentation. So, Rupali, I think we can uh, 
fit for the question answer session? Definitely. Uh, that was a wonderful presentation. The webinar had such fascinating insights into the whole process. Thank you very much, Shanis and Dylan. Thank we you, could actually learn a lot of things and I'm sure the students are learning it as well. So just opening the Q&A session, I would request to just share in my screen for the time being. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. I would request all the students to write their questions in the chat box. Also, I can see a question which is there from Vaishnav. Uh, if the panelists could answer this. I would address, um, I mean, okay. Chanish, uh, Dylan, and Priya yeah, sure, as well sure. to give in the end. The question is, can someone with a specialization in accounting for bachelors take up a master's specialization in um, uh, in finance. Um, so yeah, I, I think, uh, uh, Dylan, uh, of course, you might be having your own perspective. But if I were to talk about EU Business School purely, mm. uh, Vaishnav, um, you can switch over your specializations if you've done one particular specialization in bachelors, like you said, in accounting, and you want to switch over to finance. Uh, I personally, in the last five years at EU, I have seen a lot of students moving in from the engineering background uh, and applying for management-based programs programs at uh, EU Business School Munich to be specific. Uh, I think it's a great combination as well for engineering and management to be mixed. So I don't think from my end there's any problem if you shift from one specialization path uh, to another, be it at a bachelor's level or at a master's level. Uh, Dylan, if you have anything to say, Dylan, if you have anything to say on this. Uh, I think you've already covered uh, all the bases, uh, Shanis. Uh, like Shanis rightly said, uh, even at Gizma, you can uh, switch your programs. Uh, and like I mentioned, even if you are from another background, uh, you can switch to any other background if you don't mind. But if it's not correlated, then we will offer you a pre-masters. That's because we wanted to, to successfully complete the course. And a pre-masters is somewhere where we teach you the basics of the program that you've opted for. So yes, to answer your question, you can switch your programs. Wonderful. Also, we have some more questions coming up. If I can yes. just read them out. Um, I'm Priya Esther working in ISRO for the last 11 years. What is the MBA that you would suggest and what specialities? So I would ask both of you to reply to this also if Priya would also want to give in some inputs for this. Okay. Uh, so to be specific, uh, at Gizma, we only have the global MBA. It's not like a, it's not, it doesn't cover one module, it covers all bases. So it makes you ready uh, for top management program uh, positions. And uh, that's the only program that we are currently focusing on. So Shanish, do you have any other MBA programs that would help uh, Priya? Um, thanks. Uh, yeah, there are a couple of programs that can that can help you out. I think, uh, you know, uh, I think in national business would be one. It's it's a very, uh, as I mentioned, people switch over from different, uh, you know, job aspect from a job aspect or from a bachelor's aspect, what you've studied and what you've worked in. They switch into a completely different stream when they come to study at EU. That has happened very often. So very, um, you know, if you want something in relation to what you're doing at ISRO or your previous uh, education, I don't think we have anything in that particular streamline. But if you wish to switch, uh, yes, definitely there is a possibility at your business school. And Priya, I would like to add here, uh, you as you have experience in supply chain, you can go for a supply chain management program also. It is very popular in Germany and uh, EU also has a supply chain management we program. Don't. We don't, don't. We don't, no. Okay. Yeah, sorry. But but other universities has this program and uh, based on the work experience in supply chain, you can get into a supply chain management program. Okay, yeah. uh, right. So you can get in touch with the experts right away. Uh, if you can just see the numbers are there and we are, we'll be happy to help you forward. Esther, now coming to the next question by Anmol Arjun, what about job opportunities in finance industry? Um, both. EU and Gizma have a lot of finance programs, I feel. Uh, yeah. And yeah, if you could just provide some insights to this. 
Yeah, even in terms of, you know, I always, I always tell my students one thing, if you're looking at Germany as a very technical place, uh, you need to understand uh, that every uh, company, every institution has a management side of the firm. If you're looking like at a firm like BMW, I don't think it would go places and it would be such a big brand if not for the finance and the marketing department, for example. Uh, HP as well, Alliance, uh, Alliance as well, of course, that's insurance space um, and many other pockets of, of uh, management that they're into. Um, so in terms of any management based course, you're going to have jobs in any sort of a company company that you go into unless it's like a startup which is like really new and you've got like 10 people and you don't have your established departments but if you're looking at you know uh, your MNCs or if you're looking at like well-established business even German institute uh, you know German companies you will see that you have a finance or marketing or PR uh, department so I don't think you need to worry about that from that aspect that is something that you really need to get clear about Germany that even if it's some place where in our heads we've we've you know jargon it has a very technical place there are other opportunities as well that are available yeah truly said like every company has their departments without which they cannot function as a whole so even though uh, everybody thinks that Germany is more for IT or more for automotive, but see those companies also require an HR department, they also require a marketing department, they also require a finance department. That being said, there are a lot of job opportunities because uh, the size of companies are huge over there. Uh, all top companies are established in Germany. So to answer your question, yes, there are a lot of job opportunities. And otherwise too, there are a lot of uh, career mm -hmm. centers, I mean, things that are there to help them as well. So as we've all seen, to Manya regarding GMAT online course, Amrit, uh, we'll be very happy to take it forward. We are going to get in touch with you uh, regarding this about a GMAT online course. And you can definitely schedule a demo as well. Um, coming on to the next questions by Anmol Arjun again. Can I get an 18 month of post-study work visa after one year of my master's? Yeah, so I would request uh, Priya to answer as well as the other experts as well to put in the add-ons. Yes, after completing one year of uh, master's degree, you will get 18 months of work permit. Yeah, just to add in there, even if you want to do a program at, uh, you know, I would say two of our campuses, if you say, for example, start off in Geneva and then move to Munich for SEM two and three for a master's or an MBA, you will still get the 18 months job seekers visa. You need to be in Germany uh, for a period of over six months studying in order to get your 18 months job seekers visa. So, yeah, the, the I would say a very short and sweet answer is yes, you will get this. Yes. Perfect. I can see uh, uh, smiles as well onto the question. My query was I'm having work experience in the accounts field for 19 months and now I'm currently working in Accenture as a content analyst for the past six months. Change in roles, does it matter in a work experience? I would request all the experts to give in their views on this. So see, yes, it does matter uh, because your experience was in a different field. But it all boils down to how how well you because see when you change your role obviously you've done that program right now right that's why you want to search for a role in that field so it all boils down to your knowledge that you've acquired right now and your confidence level at the interview session change in roles are very much possible I myself have changed like three uh, three careers if you if you don't believe me I was into IT then I went into sales and now I'm into education so it's very very much uh, possible it just depends on how well you 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 pick up your academics because you're changing and uh, you will be successful don't worry about it yeah i would like to add more about it uh, see you need to have a proper justification that why you are switching mm. because uh, it, it doesn't give a good impact on the in, on the university or uh, it's good for your career to change your field so frequently so it uh, you need to have a proper justification that why you are looking for change of field and you need to justify this to the university. Um, yeah, just to add on to something that uh, you mentioned, Priya, I think um, 
you know, at a university level, I don't know, Dylan, if you might want to pitch in, but at least for EU business school, I don't think you need to justify why you're changing your specialization, but I think more so you need to justify it to the visa department. Uh, we as an institution understand that students want to change, they want to break out of what they're currently doing, they want to change careers, they want to change their education streamline, and as a result of which we're very flexible on that part. Uh, but from a visa yeah. perspective, I think it's very important for you to explain as a student to the German embassy or Spanish or Swiss embassy, why you are changing and what caused this change. Um, that's another thing, you know, just going a little deeper into that when you're writing your SOP statement of purpose or your cover letter for the German embassy, there are certain points that need to be kept in mind as to why you're choosing the program, why you're choosing Munich as a city, why EU business school particularly. Don't talk about your intentions of going there to work. You seem like an immigration case. Um, so it's very important. Mania, of course, will help you with this, but yes, I just yes. put it out there as a general information that, you know, it's very important to put all these points in your SOP or cover letter. Um, I don't know, Dylan, if you have any different viewpoints on this. No, no, very rightly said, Shanice. Even I was just going to mention about the SOP. So in case if you're switching, uh, uh, what do you say, your uh, field, you need to mention that in the SOP, you need to reason it out, you need to show them the bigger picture of what you're thinking and where you see yourself down the line. So that will actually help the embassy know that you're, you're really interested in studying in Germany. And like uh, Shanice rightly said, if you mention about working, then it will it'll seem like an immigration case and you're actually applying for a student visa, right? So you need to portray that. So you need to so focus the intention more should your... be, uh, yeah, the intention by each hmm. and every student in their visa SOP should be that they are going for higher education and they will come back to India after completing their studies. Their intention exactly. is not to yes. settle over there. And uh, as I was mentioning that change of field, like your work experience, because 19 months is not a uh, big time period or when you started your career and you change and after Sometimes you are changing again and then after six to eight months, you are thinking that I'm, I want to change again. So that actually doesn't give a good impact on your CV also, if you will see. Uh, so I normally suggest students should decide their uh, program or the career accordingly. So there are a few more questions, Rupali. We can take that. Let us... Next would be do additional inter international recognized certifications are they going to help them in their job prospects um yeah uh, sorry could you repeat the question please yeah so it's two additional international recognized certification do they help uh, the students in their job prospects probably they're talking about uh, the certifications they do online or international recognized certifications like they are i'm not very sure anmol if we are wrong please let us know but I think it's about that. Yeah, if it's about the degrees that you're talking about that you're going to receive yeah. after completing your program, then yes, it will tremendously help you because uh, Germany has one of the best educational uh, qualities in the world and their certificates and the degrees are recognized across the globe. So right. if it's a degree that you're talking about, yes. If it's about uh, some certifications, then it, it is a case-to-case -case basis. It depends on what certification you're doing, uh, how valuable is it, it is at that point of the time. Accreditation, I think. Yes, right. and the accreditation is also, yes. Perfect. Uh, Priya again has a question. I would like to know about the opportunities for pursuing PhD in the field of management. Costing, optimization, strategic management. What is the package after international MBA and EU business school? A rough estimate. Yeah. Um, just to answer that question, Priya, uh, we offer a PhD, which is uh, really the the... the a uh, doctorate in business administration program. We offer this uh, course particularly at the Geneva campus in Switzerland. Um, and you get, it's a five-year program, but you only get a two-year student uh, visa. Uh, so that's something that you need to keep in mind. I will come back to you with the costing and optimization of the, of the program. But if you're looking at a package post, the MBA or the master's program, you're looking at approximately about 70 a uh, thousand to hundred thousand euros uh, for the year is what you're looking at on a rough estimate uh, for the, your gross salary, specifically in Germany. Perfect. I think that is all for the day. And I will request all the students to share in all of their queries at the given number. And we can directly connect you with the delegates as well. The representatives who are here also are experts. So, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Rupadi, for hosting us. Thank you so much, Priya. 
Uh, thanks, thank Anis. Uh, it was a wonderful Mariam. session. Yeah. Thank you so much. We had a wonderful session today. I think we have one more question. Let's see. What are my chances of getting an offer letter from Gizma in your business school? I think nobody can answer this question. Yeah. Unless you, know, you both can. <laughs> And more, you need to get in touch with us, uh, get your documents uh, evaluated by us, and we'll be happy to help you. Yeah, totally. Yes. Definitely. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend, everyone. And uh, thank you so much once again for hosting us, Mania. Uh, Dylan, once again, a pleasure meeting uh, you and co host, uh, co paneling this with you. Thank, thank you. you so thank you. So much, thank you. Uh, thank you. Have Chanel. a great weekend, everyone. Thanks. I'll see you. Bye. Bye bye.